Fine Freya is not affiliated in any way with OkCupid or any other dating service. It is intended solely for critique and satire. If you find real wisdom or advice here, well, that's just a coincidence, baby. And now, it's time to get cozy. <laughs> Happy Freya's Day! Welcome again to Find Freya, the podcast that turns online dating into a role-playing game. I am Mark. And I'm Natasha. Why are we doing this? I'm tired. <laughs> I am also tired. But that's no excuse. we got to power through this. All right. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do is, because uh, I haven't shown you this yet, is I checked our email and one of the people who likes us is apparently a clown yeah that's that's something <laughs> so that's like not that's like somewhere between clown and juggalo though mm, yeah yeah same same thing <laughs> <laughs> no there is a distinct difference between clowns and juggalos also like 80s pro wrestler oh no that's way more accurate <laughs> okay anyway is that the only email we got no those are just uh the uh, the not... message notif I delete the message notifications. Oh. But... So um, do you want to get into some messages first? Yeah, okay. let's do that. Mm. All right. So <laughs> I like that top one. We'll mm. get to that. Hi, how are you? You seem to be a nice person. No, I am very no no, no no. You seem to be nice person. Aha. <laughs> I am very new here. Just coming from blank after completing my research. I am looking for someone alike. Research on what? How to not English? <laughs> That's um, a kind of odd way to put things, though. Like, I am looking for someone alike. That's not even, like, a, a like what? We also said we wouldn't pick ones that were enemies, like a certain percentage of enemies. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. He is 50%, 57% enemy. So. so that's an automatic delete. Trash that. Next one is, hey, where did you learn Russian? I mean, that is a conversation starter. It is. So it's not particularly interesting, but it's a legitimate way to ask someone to engage with you. Yeah. Interesting enough for us, though. No. Okay. We have very high standards here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to say his name just because it, it adds to the, <laughs> to the context. Um, the message is just, I'm Pete. <laughs> That's I'm Pete. It. I'm Pete. I'm Pete. I'm Pete. I'm Pete. I'm Pete. <laughs> no, there's no punctuation. That's just, true. I'm Pete. I'm Pete. Uh, this was sent in last week. So good morning. How How's your long weekend going so far? And <gasps> no, no longer has an account. So delete that. Why bother? Hi, how are you? Nope. Delete. Good morning, how are you? How was the weekend? Nope. Uh, no. Um, okay, we've got one that actually read our profile. Wow, I love the poetic Edda and all things Old Norse. Smiley face with hearts on it twice. First time I've ever seen that on a profile. Happy face. How's your night? No longer has an account. <laughs> and this was just sent last week, so... That's a, that's a pretty quick turnaround. What's going on there? Did they just find uh, the one or what? What's up, babes? <laughs> babes? He knows there were two people. <laughs> <laughs> They're catching on. Uh, hi, hey, how's it going? Happy Friday. Nah. Hi. Nah. Hello, Freya. Meat is my spirit animal. Aninal. Aninal. Um, okay. <laughs> Good have, for you. Have fun with that. <laughs> hi, how you doing? Nope. Oh boy! Who, who over the age of eight? Who over the age thirteen enjoys the Marvel Thor movies? You are childish, and that turns me on. Let's meet. Whoa! Whoa! Oh fuck! No! Uh, oh, that is no. so not okay. No. 
No. You're childish and that turns me on. Okay, this goes two directions. No, 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 no. And both are not the greatest. Uh, One's I, really bad. I, I want to be done with him right now. Okay. <laughs> but we're 60% match. Okay. Are you a transgender dude? <laughs> I wonder if he's asking because he's afraid of the answer. Or... Or because that's what he's into. Are you a trans... Gender let's let's give his dude. profile a look. Uh, uh, no, he's a straight man looking for women. So why? So I think he's asking because it's like, whoa, I'm not into that homo shit or whatever. It's probably yeah. There's, I I, I would guess that I I think the only reason to ask that would be no homo. <laughs> also, that's not like something you start with, right? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Uh, nope. No good messages. No. I uh, guess we'll... One really super creepy one, one, though. Yeah, I guess we'll have to answer some questions now. Yep, we will. Oh, boy. Off to an exciting and thrilling start. <laughs> <laughs> um, nobody's fulfilled our request in our profile yet, though, of, uh, of sharing stories with us. It makes us so feel so lonely. We invite you to do the same. It's like we're talking to no one. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I may have a, a source uh, very soon of um, of stories. I mean, I can, like solicit from a, a message board. I mean, if I tried, I, if yeah. I put any effort into yeah. this, yeah. but I'm busy right now. Yes, you are. You're quite busy. Yeah. So uh, we've got, which of these is likely to make you more nervous? A promising first date or an important interview? Um, <clears throat> I mean, like... For for Freya and also for me, um, an important interview is the answer here. Um, first dates have never made me nervous because if I go out on a first date, it's like coffee or a beer or something, and that's it, and no no pretense with it. So um, it's it's generally just a getting to know you sort of conversational thing, and because that's how I roll. But uh, oh. Well- I want to point out first, this is kind of like the most logical question we've had to answer today that just kind of straightforward and makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, like that I don't mind being a dichotomy because it's it kind of it works in a no, way because it's it's not it's not you can it's not one of those uh, like little trap questions. No, where, it's just like what would literally make you more yeah, nervous? Wh- like which of these is more relevant to you? I think that's a good question. Um, and I think. Well, I mean, I I would say Freya wouldn't really carry their way. She wouldn't. I'd she say, definitely wouldn't sweat a first date, though. No, but yeah, so I guess that automatically puts her into the interview category. But uh, for me, I don't know. I I get super stressed out with important work shit. So, that, so that's your answer. <laughs> that as well. would be my answer. Well, that makes three of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of which is fictional, but hey. <laughs> He's counting, um, she? and she'll accept. I think any of those. Yeah. I don't think it's. I don't think it's important to know what other people would uh, answer this. This as. is kind of just like the like ten things you didn't know about yourself Facebook quiz. I mean, unless it's the kind of thing where you're like, um, uh, where you're super nervous about dates and uh, about first dates, and somebody answers that then I might want to know that if I was going to meet someone from this site. If if only just to make them feel more comfortable. Right. Not just being like, oh, you're so scared? Let's go bungee jump. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we don't need to qualify that, I don't think. Nope. Do you often make jokes that offend more uptight people? Oh, yes boy. or no? Oh, <laughs> boy. Uh, you can Five. you can speak to this because you have you work in have environments a... where it's not appropriate. Where it's not, yeah, and yet I do it anyway. <laughs> I think you find that in very well in uptight by uptight. I think in my case would have to be defined as like academics or professionals. And what I often find is it's either really awkward or you get like those few people who are like choking back laughter. 
And then you feel more comfortable because, you know, you're not alone in your sick sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's not even... See, I take it a step further. It's not jokes that just offend people. They're, like, horrifying jokes. Sometimes, like, gory and, like, extremely inappropriate. (laughs) Dead baby jokes. (laughs) Well, I haven't brought those out often. Mm. Um, But when I facilitate support groups, and this is actually kind of an interesting tidbit um often suicide is a topic that is on the table and sometimes to make things lighter you just kind of have to put in like a death joke mm-hmm. and like you have to do it with extreme caution and care oh, of course. and reading the room really well but like it it's appropriate sometimes and like but you do well, encounter those uptight I mean, people you, you bring up an important an important point there which is you know read the room like understand the, your audience, and uh, and you'll have greater success. But also, I mean, as someone who, uh, who who has worked in comedy, I I can tell you, you know, there are ways to deliver any topic that uh, that people are going to find funny, and people aren't going to find funny. Um, you know, in general, uh, comedians, like especially male comedians, making rape jokes is is very distasteful but i have a joke in my stand-up routine that has it has rape in it but it's not like the focus of it it's more making fun of how police treat victims um but i've you know i've had like hardcore feminists laugh at that joke and 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 you like that one right i don't even know what you're talking about yeah you do (laughs) why don't you tell everyone what your joke okay so The joke is that I used to do theater back in college, and um, the rest of my group got cast as, uh, you know, students one through five, but I got cast to play the serial rapist, which is really not how you want to be known on campus your freshman year. (laughs) Um, Like, I didn't go into the uh, audition room and and say, hey, here's a role I can play convincingly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, it was just like... um, I, I looked at the cast list and it said, and it said, Mark, dot, 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 rapist. <laughs> Yay. Um, so the, the big problem there is that I had, uh, the, I had a method actor for a drama teacher. So his whole thing was like, I want you to become your character. Even when you're <laughs> off stage, I want you to be your character, which is super easy if you're student one through five little awkward for me <laughs> so i'm walking around campus in my costume at night jumping out of bushes going blah because i think that's what they do for some reason and uh you know when when a woman beats the shit out of you and pepper sprays you in the eyes and you're left bleeding on the curb you can uh you can go to the police and complain all you want but they just look at your face mask and your gloves and your black hoodie and say well look at how you were dressed you were asking for it <laughs> oh yeah i do remember that joke <laughs> Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I've had a lot of good responses with that, and it's it's not specifically a rape joke, but you know it's the kind of thing where you have to read the room. Like I've told it different ways, and if I bring in that element of the role I was playing later into the joke, it bombs because people aren't expecting it, and then that's a twist. You have to let them know what the topic is about early, and I think that's I think that's important in comedy. Um, no matter what the topic, uh, I have another actual, um, a story that I can tell. Uh, I was having a conversation with, um, some people at a film festival in, in Las Vegas, and we were talking about how anything, whether or not anything can be joked about. And there was this one older woman who said like, no, there are some topics you absolutely can't joke about. Uh, like for example, uh, your- Cunt! <laughs> You've been wanting to say that for a long time on this podcast. Um, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, no, I, I didn't call her that. Um, no, but she said, uh, she said, well, no, no, like, uh, like you, your short films in this festival, and it's about the Holocaust. What's so funny about the Holocaust? And I said, well, I'll tell you, in certain context, there is humor to be found in that. Uh, and I heard a story about this group of... Um, of uh, gypsies who asked if um, they could form a prayer circle based around uh, their beliefs. And, you know, the um, concentration camp guards were like, 
whatever, do your thing. I don't care. You're going to die anyway. Um, so they started uh, congregating in this little prayer circle and they'd be speaking a language the Germans wouldn't understand. But what they were actually doing uh, instead of praying were making or like making fun of the guards saying stuff like uh like oh look at that one his nose is big he should be in here with us instead of guarding <laughs> and and just like little things like that and they'd make up little songs about them so so yeah there's i think there's humor to be found in any subject as long as you have the right context well even then you know take a chance and see if you get fired or not <laughs> it's always a nice a nice gamble to have in life i yeah. live life on the edge and the moral of the story is read the room. <laughs> yeah. um, so does, how, how do we want to answer this for on Freya's behalf? I don't think she makes jokes that are that offensive because I think she's just kind of chill enough to not do that. Yeah, I would say she probably doesn't make those jokes, but she she would appreciate she would approve, them. Yeah, yeah, she'd approve, but I don't think she'd do them herself. Is that important to her? No. Um, do we want to qualify this by saying, but I laugh at them? Sure. Okay. If you really want to. <laughs> what is your preferred cuddling position? Big spoon, small spoon, all spoons. What about sporks? <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's only if you want a fork. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Are sporks, like, spooning for transgender people? Um... No, it's for spoons who want a fork. I told you. (laughs) (laughs) No, Uh, but like, hear me out on this. (laughs) This this question's not about sporking. (laughs) If you want to come up with... No, but I feel like that's going to be taken out of context and like what it is in my mind. So I feel the need to explain where I was going with that whole transgender spork thing. But on second thought, I think I'm just going to leave it for a while. And and you can now (laughs) just wonder about where where exactly i was going with that it wasn't offensive it might have been offensive i don't know but um moving on i think transgender sporks might be uh the episode title transgender spork. <laughs> or possibly i'm pete i'm pete <laughs> okay we'll figure that out later um so i what do you think they mean by all spoons like is that a poly option or um okay how or do just you... they like either one so say you're five a group of five people and you're all spooning how well if you're in Is the it... if you're in the middle you're both big spoon and little spoon that seems amazing yeah <laughs> <laughs> would they go like They'd... biggest to smallest or i i would assume so just logistically really? yeah i mean you know when when you're forming your little cuddle puddle, you wanna <laughs> you wanna cuddle puddle appropriately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get your guy to cuddle puddling today. <laughs> they do have cuddle parties. Yeah. Like non sexual cuddle parties. Yeah. They have apps for that now. They do? Yeah. That's been out for a while. Mm. I'd say Freya is into all spoons. Yeah. Did you know that the term spoonie also refers to people with disabilities? Does it? Yeah. Hmm. How so? I have no fucking idea. When I heard that, I was like, what the fuck is going on here with that? And like, You with call them spoons? Spoonies or something like that. Spoon? And Which is weird because I was looking up... It's, it's, a, it's I think it's a Tumblr thing. Oh, of course. But, um... <laughs> Like, it is a slang term, and it was really... If you see something on the internet and you don't know what it is, it's <laughs> probably a Tumblr thing. But it, it refers to mental illness, too, and so I was seeing posts related to bipolar disorder and people calling themselves spoonies, and I was like, what the fuck? I'm not a spoonie. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm not a fucking spoon. I'm a spork. Spork power, yo! <laughs> you spoonie bard. No. 90s kids will get that. <laughs> <laughs> 90s kids who played uh, Super Nintendo RPGs. Yeah, you can't just um, say 90s kids because that's <laughs> not really fair. True. That's why I qualified. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, Answer, she'll accept any. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. This is this is a very simple question. It's yeah. not something that's a that's a. Do you want to be big spoon or small spoon? Like, I ask you that all the time. Yeah. 
And, like, whatevs. Anyway. And I like either. Yeah. Could you date someone who already has children from a previous relationship? Yes or no? Um, see, this is, this brings up an interesting topic, which is, uh, that I know from listening to personal accounts, um, from people who have used these websites that, uh, that single parents trying to find, uh, uh, a date on these sites is is actually quite hard. Um, well, in general, it's a lot yeah, harder. Yeah, and uh, and I think a lot of it is that people assume that they're going to want you to be their kid's father or mother, and and I I know that that's really not like maybe long term if things really hit it off, but like as a single parent, you don't want to say like that's what you're looking for. And I think most are saying they don't want that. And, and a lot I've seen actually say, I, I wouldn't want you to meet my child until, like, things get serious. So, well, which makes sense. if we go into, like, theories of parenting, step-parents, it's, it's a tricky role to be in. If that, I mean, if you eventually get married and want to call yourself a step-parent or whatever. Um, because you're not technically, so, you're, you're not that person's parent. Um you never will be but again it depends on like what age you came into that child's life like if it's a teenager fucking forget about it <laughs> but if it's like an you infant sit them down. no no <laughs> really i'm not trying to replace your dad well i mean like i got a stepdad when i was 12 mm-hmm. and you know he's not and never has been my parent he's always been kind of more of a friend and that's kind of like the advice I hear from other people who've been in my position is that like they're just they're not a replacement for your parent and things tend to go wrong when they take more of an authoritative role. And I also wanted to say like going beyond just like dating as a single parent, it's not just because you have a kid, it's also because of the constraints of being a single parent in society makes it really hard to go on a date. Yeah. Um, because you have to, you know, you have to arrange childcare, or um, send them off to weekend dad. We, or <laughs> if that exists, I mean, oh, we're also talking about, you know, if, if it's a woman looking, if it's a dad looking, I mean, like still the issue is that you have a lot more to juggle than someone who doesn't have kids. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, th- I would have to confirm this, but I'm pretty sure that single, uh, mothers have quite a bit more difficult of a time than uh, single fathers yes that is uh, well, there's in sort several of that, ways that stigma and that kind of like like oh i i want uh you know a woman who's you know who's going to give me attention well me only we could get into details but i mean it comes with this phenomenon in society where generally women are have a harder time in life than men do but again it's all it's I'm so sorry it's <laughs> you should be <laughs> um but it's also more it's complicated because if you're a single dad and you don't have um the other parents support that can also be difficult um so it's not just about gender it's um really how well supported you are in life and you, you know to be able to go on dates you have to be at a certain point in life where that's a thing you can do like a lot of single parents are trying to get by you Mm. know and not just like don't really have time to go on a nice sunday afternoon date you know they might be full-time caregivers and also full-time working it gets complicated is basically Mm. what i'm trying to say so to answer this question i think for me personally the answer is no just because i don't want kids in any way Mm. (laughs) Um, I don't have anything against people who are in that situation. I just personally don't want kids. Right. And, and I'm in the same way. Like we we're uh, one of the reasons we're together is because we're both very career focused. We don't want children. So for us personally, I mean, that's, you know, that is a deal breaker because we, you know, we set out specifically not to have children, but if you eventually want children anyway, then then yeah, I can see how you'd be more susceptible to, um, you know, to wanting to date someone who already has a kid. And a lot of people don't find a problem with it. So, but I can see Freya not wanting to because she doesn't want to commit. Um, 
Yeah, but I but I think given the nature of her dating preferences, which are like short term, um, yeah, and and just kind of free roaming, um, I I would say she probably already has. Maybe she didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yes. Yeah, I'd say yes, and um, I think she would date either way. Yeah. So that's not important, and I don't think we need to qualify it either. No. Moving on. <laughs> how do you <laughs> how do you feel about documentaries? Yay. Okay. No. no. In caps. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> There's no soft no there. <laughs> I. Oh, what an odd question to ask. Yeah. I I generally enjoy documentaries, though I don't watch nearly enough of them. Like I'll watch, um, you know, clips on uh, on the youtubes and things like that but uh generally if it's a movie length documentary um i find that a lot of the ones that i've seen kind of have um agendas to them but you know who one of my heroes is david attenborough no and so his documentaries you put one of those in front of me i'll just like watch those forever so yeah it really depends on what it is so i mean <laughs> Really, the question is kind of vague. It's like, how do you feel about the concept of documentaries in general? Also, I... like documentaries elucidate concepts or subjects or people or places that we don't have access to normally, and I right. feel like that's extremely important for people who don't look into those issues. Like, I can read however many scholarly articles about this and that. But it's different when it's a documentary because not only is that visual and there's an art to that, it gets more personal than anything written ever will. So I think it's very complimentary to a lot of the work that I do and I enjoy them thoroughly. I mean, like, I'd rather watch a documentary than go through 50 pages of oh, research yeah. Yeah. <laughs> any day. <laughs> yeah, if someone can, uh, can pack it all into a very concise, informative uh, format then yeah, I'll, I'd much rather do that. Which from an academic point of view is never possible. <laughs> There's <laughs> always um, stuff that's missed in translation, but um, it's still enjoyable nonetheless when you find some really passionate documentary... Doc or do they have a name? Documentarians? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool beans. Didn't know that. Hmm. So would does freya i can't see freya being like extremely enthusiastic about it but i can see her being like yeah sure they're fine yeah let's go with okay and um <laughs> would would she want to accept somebody who's absolutely against them i don't think so because i think intolerance is against her philosophy but i think it's only probably a little important sure because, you know, I don't think she's into them enough I have to... a feeling she's busy fucking <laughs> than watching a documentary. Or she'll start and then fuck. Hmm. If you had to name your greatest motivation in life thus far, what would it be out of these four limited scopes? Love, wealth, expression, or knowledge? <laughs> None of the above. Eh, too bad there isn't one. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's very limiting... Because it's, for, a, it's a false quadricotomy? It's, it's just not a, a... Is that a word? It was not a well-thought-out question. No. Because my motivation in life is basically inequities and injustices in the world. You'd fall probably more into knowledge, though. But it's not the pursuit of knowledge. It's the pursuit of helping people. Which right. doesn't fall under love, wealth, expression, or knowledge. Knowledge just happens um, to be something I need to do the things that I do. Yeah, true. Um, for me, it would probably be expression just because, you know, I work in the arts. And um, and that's, you know, my my major passion. But uh, For Freya? Freya. Um, expression, I would say. Yeah. Because um, love. She's a bit meh. artsy. Wealth, definitely not. Knowledge. Yeah, I, yeah. Expression seems right. She's she's more about like freedom culture. to be experiencing like, um, other people. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can I can accept that. And she'll accept any of these because it's not important. This is not an important question. No. Do you believe morality is universal or relative? <laughs> oh boy. And the only answers are are universal and relative. Well, I mean, like, it's either relative or it's not, I suppose. No, that is not true whatsoever, and I could just go on for ten minutes about theories of moral (laughs) psychology, so let's not even get into that pot of gold. But uh, more, I mean, it's not universal. Well, what other options would you put in there? Morality is relative um, at best. I'd say it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends if you're looking at the world as a whole or in cultures, because in cultures, sometimes morality is uniform, but sometimes it's not. Oftentimes it's not. So you'd have to look at different levels of societies and cultural and people. Um, I can't, I couldn't go into either category, but if I was forced to put one, I'd say relative. Yeah, um... Because no one, I, I mean, we don't have the same moral standards anywhere. Right. I don't think anyone can really truly say that morality is universal, though. No, and there's a popular theory of morality um, that sees it in stages, and that um, it's basically three stages. And the first one is that you kind of like it's more primitive. You don't really think more outside of yourself. And the second one is you're kind of beginning to be aware of the people around you and the third one is um more like worldly um looking at injustices and whatnot Mm -hmm. um and on freya's behalf i would say she probably wouldn't accept universal would she know (laughs) yeah um i mean it's not that complicated of a question Uh, she's not an idiot (laughs) sometimes i wonder if she's just too chill to to give a shit yeah, I, I don't think she cares. That doesn't mean she doesn't know. <laughs> no, I mean, that's obviously true. Um, and how important would that be? Maybe somewhat because yeah. we, yeah, don't want, uh, there are some moral standards that definitely don't Because I mean, like, definitely literally, don't how, how can you believe that morality is universal among everyone? That would mean everyone has the same morals, and that's clearly not true. Yeah. So it's this is, I mean, it might be a false dichotomy, but... It's like one of the answers is literally wrong. Hmm. So let's move on. It still depends. Hmm. Anyway, would you consider dating someone who has vocalized a strong negative bias toward a certain race of people? Answers are yes, no, and it depends on which race. Oh, wow. Uh, (laughs) Well, we know how Hitler would respond. I mean, isn't it depends on which race the same as yes? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, because any answers that that's not no means you're racist. Right. And uh, I mean, there's no... If you just look at the world, if you actually experience, you know, any kind of walk of life and actually speak to them and, and get to know them and understand their circumstances in their lives and you know what uh what they're like as individuals you really can't you know label any culture with one specific bias you know what i'm really looking forward to Hmm? alien invasions (laughs) because i feel like finally that would allow us to be like, oh, wait, race is humanity. <laughs> and we would solve a lot of social problems. Right, w- right. when they see us and say, like, ah, oh, you're all the same. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that was kind of like, um, uh, did you ever listen to any of the commentary tracks uh, when you were watching Battlestar Galactica? No. Um, okay, so the showrunner uh, talked about why there were only 12 Cylon models. And, um, and he said, because... Basically, uh, they when they evolved towards being able to uh, create, you know, human-looking machines, they basically looked at humans and said, eh, "There's only twelve of you." <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's kind of like I feel like that's how it, how aliens might look at us. It's just like, eh, you have small aesthetic differences, but you know, 
they're basically, you know, you're all the same. You all got the same body parts. And if they extent. examined us, they'd it, find that out yeah, too. Yeah, just cultural speaking, differences. Yeah. Um, Ethnicity. Yeah. So mm, we're going to, you know, say no here and we're going to, I think, only accept no. And I think that's very important. Obviously. Because, uh, you know, she don't fuck around with racists. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Do you ever Skype slash call slash video chat a a date you met online before meeting up in person? Uh, yes, I prefer to chat digitally before meeting up, meeting in. Meet, meeting <laughs> in what? <laughs> a, a, a windowless van. Uh, uh, sometimes, maybe if someone asks me to, or never. I actually think that's a really good idea. It is. Um, it, you know, kind of gets you to uh, get a sense of their personality before you meet up and decide if you want to meet up. Well, I can save time and money. And, you know, obviously someone's still going to be putting their best foot forward on, on the uh, Skype call. But, you know, you, if you get so much of a sense that you don't want to meet that person uh, through that, like they're super awkward or just it goes horribly, then, you know, yeah, exactly. Save some time and money. Yeah. I don't know how this seems economic to me. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that she has because it asks, do you ever? Yeah. Yeah. But the, I don't know, this is, this is kind of a weird question because the answers imply, um, would you? Yeah. Not do you. I, I could see her not wanting to because she would really enjoy the, the personal, physical connection that you can't get on an online platform. Yeah. And, and I also think never is, is a good answer for I never have. So, that's pick never. Yeah. Answers she'll accept. I'd still say never because that she's she's very much into being around people, mm-hmm. and she, I don't see her as how, very. How about a maybe too? No, let's make a hard decision on All this. Right. Because, Just a hard no. Yeah. And how important is I'd that? I'd say this is somewhat important. Do we want to explain? I, it at all? Yeah, I'd explain it as. Uh, Technology isn't really my thing. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> do we want to say that because she's on a website? Yeah, why not? All right. Just say, like, I prefer to meet face-to-face to get, how... a, to, to get someone's vibe. Yeah, how about you, you can't really tell through technology what a person's like? Yeah. Thank you, writer. <laughs> Should burning your country's flag be illegal, yes or no? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is freedom of expression. Yeah. And it's a piece of fabric. Probably made in China. Yeah. <laughs> and does you'll accept? No. And... I'd say this is very important because... Freedom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Explain? No, I, no, that's very self-explanatory. Yeah. Well, that was quick. Do you believe your country would be more or less safe if every adult owned a gun? This is a very good question. Mm. Research says, no, you would not be more safe. It would actually cause more casualties, both accidental, um, more access to firearms actually uh, correlate with higher rates of suicide. And... Generally, cities that don't have anti-gun laws are generally safer and have less crime. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, to that end, I also want to point out, like, every time you hear about, uh, like, a mass shooting in the news, there's always uh, those people who say, like, oh, well, if, if more people had guns, this wouldn't happen because they could you know, take down the shooter, which is not true because the people who say that have this kind of like Rambo fantasy that, um, that they'd be able to spring into action and, uh, call upon whatever super ninja training they Mm -hmm. have. Like they basically think they're, 
the like the the cast of Predator. Well, there is an argument in the states that teachers should be armed, and the argument against this is it creates a school climate that is very cold and welcoming and and fear based and fear based, <laughs> and that contributes to um, students' well being in a negative way, um, which ultimately reduces academic success. So it's not a good idea, and should not be implemented Mm -hmm. in any way like even things like having metal detectors at school make school climate less positive and you see all sorts of negative effects from stuff like that so it's just not a good idea let me ask you this uh would you support the idea of teachers carrying pepper spray no no school is a safe place that does not need to include items that School's might be not violent. always a safe place, though, because you have you have students who are stronger than some of the teachers, bigger than some of the teachers, who uh, want to get violent to some of the teachers. So, what do you do about that? Nonviolent training. Hmm. Um, you don't need to carry weapons to disarm someone, and if it's that concerning in your school, then teachers might have the option to be trained in self defense. And this also goes towards, uh, you know, early education, making it uh, kind of like phasing out the ideas that that violence is a solution. Essentially, if we have mental health installed early on in education, you will see these things go away. This is something that we're trying. This is something I'm personally trying to implement into schools. And it's very difficult for a plethora of reasons. But if it eventually comes to fruition it will make these problems go away is kind of the simplistic way to see it so Mm -hmm. you know be more mentally healthy and these things deteriorate as issues so i'm gonna i'm just gonna go ahead and say less safe and she will only accept less safe and somewhat or very uh to me it's very important but to her i think it would be somewhat important Mm -hmm. because i don't think she really gets involved in like intense would she also accept neither slash unsure i think i think so because this is something where you you kind of have to be pretty informed about to have a Mm -hmm. a critical discussion about right okay do you believe contraception is morally wrong? Yes or no? No. Hard no. Yeah. And that's very important, important. I think. Um, <laughs> and I think to her it's very Well, important. I think we had a question a while back about Plan B. Right. That was uh, who's who should pay for Plan B. B. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But uh, this is contraception in general being morally wrong. Yeah, fuck like, that shit. Like, go back to eHarmony. <laughs> right. <laughs> um I I think I think that doesn't need an explanation. It speaks for itself. Contraception is a human right. Should we say that in this? Yes. Okay. A woman has uh, women and men have the right to control or have autonomy over their own bodies and contraception is part of that. Right. How often do you brush your teeth? <laughs> Twice or more a day, once a day, only on days I feel like it, or rarely or never. Oh boy, rarely. That's <laughs> that's a little bit terrifying. It's a good question to ask, though. Yeah, because, hygiene is important. Yeah, you don't want to meet up with somebody who seems amazing online, and then they're like, <gasps> "No, hygiene is actually it's one of the things I've definitely looked for." in potential mates Mm. um if you don't like one thing that really gets to me is like showering every well not every day but like regularly and like just taking care of yourself like i'm a very like i'm not fashion forward because that would imply that i buy into mainstream fashion which i don't at all but i'm very i keep up my appearances and i expect my partner to do the same Mm mm-hmm and I don't think that's unreasonable, no. <laughs> especially when it's like health stuff, like brushing your teeth, which right. you kind of need to do if you want healthy teeth right? and <laughs> don't want gum disease or anything like that. Mm. Although in, in my case, um, 
unfortunate circumstances have caused me to have dental problems even uh even without hygiene being a factor and um, that's understandable it's not like i'm gonna discriminate against someone who literally can't afford dental care well i mean like my my circumstances were like um i think when i was uh like seven or eight years old uh my front tooth was uh was chipped in a in an accident when i was 19 my two front teeth were pushed back in a car accident um i had uh uh, kind of a shitty dentist uh, give me two bad crowns that didn't stay in um, one's just gone and the other I have to uh, re-cement every once in a while and um, so yeah it's like I've had people ask that because one's clearly a different shade than the rest of my teeth but uh, you know in general yeah you want to keep the rest healthy because I've I've known people who have just terrible teeth. Just like, let it go. Yeah. I I mean I knew one guy who was like I'm pretty sure he was a heroin addict, but he had you know rotten teeth and just you could see it every time he talked. Well, teeth can also tell you a lot about someone's lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, like if someone is uh, induces vomiting um, because they might have an eating disorder that will deteriorate your. <clears throat> Uh, your teeth. Well, if you catch up on Fargo this season, there is a character who is uh, bulimic, and uh, he has uh, his very bad teeth as oh, a result of it. Oh, they're showing a guy with eating yeah. disorder. That's yeah. good. Um, and even in Canada, we don't have dental um, covered in our like un- in our quote universal health care. So that's one of Which the we things really should. we it, well people are fighting for it. It's in the works, but. Um, to answer this question, Freya, how often would Freya brush her teeth? I can see her definitely missing a day because she was busy fucking. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think she just has sex all the time. I think she's doing other <laughs> stuff, like she's hiking or and exploring. she's traveling. And but then again, like when you're traveling sometimes, just chilling. you just don't have, um, like what the materials you need or like access to water yeah but it's also not like i mean only on days i feel like it no, is kind of a i'd bad say answer. like once a day you yeah. know with exceptions if maybe write that down in the bottom um exceptions for weird travel plans or unexpected yeah, like when, I'm, when i'm super busy i can't yeah. all the time and the answer is that sh- she'll accept or I'd say once a day or twice a more a day. And, and more would, if you're doing more than twice a day, you either have braces or you're. No, some people do. Like plenty of people after do after every, every meal. meal yeah. Um, you don't have to. But I, yeah, but I'd accept. I'd that accept answer. that. I'd just be like, stop wasting your money. <laughs> <laughs> like twice is fine. Well, lots of people use way more toothpaste than they, uh, need, than to. they need to. Yeah. Like toothpaste commercials of course will show you that you glob it all over the the, the top of the toothbrush all the you need is a little bit get it yeah. foaming and you're good to go yeah. find freya the show that gives you advice <laughs> on dental on care? dental hygiene <laughs> <laughs> this time only <laughs> um once so she'll accept once a day will she accept only on days i feel like it no no i mean if you're making out with someone that's kind of gross it is yeah so um, somewhat important yeah okay do you space out or daydream a lot (laughs) oh yeah fuck (laughs) me yeah um and that goes for all of us i think yeah oh man i mean i i like i've built a career on daydreaming literally It's, it's gone to the point where i'll be walking on campus and there will be people walking at me my friends will be walking at me waving at me calling my name and i just fucking walk right by because i'm just so not there i'm just (laughs) like in this other world and they to the point where they have to literally like punch me in the shoulder and i'll be like (laughs) fuck i'm so sorry i was in bazooka land bazooka land (laughs) is that where you go (laughs) secrets um so I think all the time, yes. Yeah, she's um, a dreamer. Yeah. and I'd uh, say she'd accept, accept anything. anything. Yeah. 
Um, so that's 70 questions. Do we want to make it to 75 or do we want to look at our top three? Well, let's look at our top three. Yeah. Why uh, not? Okay. So browse our matches and... Match percentage. So we've got uh, two women, one man. That's a 91% match. Yeah, that's our highest yet, I think. We've got a 20-year-old bisexual woman who's uh, Native American and speaks Serbian. That's an interesting mix. Yeah. Um, she's playful, charming, and confident. Street, Street smart, smart and gentlemen. That's cute. She seems cool. She's looking for uh, dating and new friends um, between the ages of 22 and 28. Interesting fashion. Hmm. Wait, was that, that a cross? A was that a cross? Ooh, that's a deal breaker. That's, that's a fashion st- choice for a lot of people sometimes she's also got instagram filters for a couple of her pictures i'm just very critical oh i know i have Um, very high standards interesting though yeah no curious Mm. um we've got oh god i think that guy is surrounded by weed yeah like weed plants yep I wonder what his hobby yep. is. His main picture is him surrounded by marijuana plants. Not surrounded, behind. Yeah. Like <laughs> behind in... and surrounded. Oh, and he's wearing a Jerry Garcia shirt. Holy shit, this guy. Okay, so this guy is a massive stoner. Grateful Dead shirt. Uh... Yeah, and a welder. Mm. He loves playing music. He's a straight man. Really? Doesn't do drugs. drugs? <laughs> that has to be ironic. Uh. Um, I'm really good at being a dad. Or maybe he just he? takes on... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm... No. I, Freya might get along with him. I mean, Freya would. Would we? Probably not. Uh, we've got a 32-year-old queer pansexual age gender. Um, Never smokes, drinks socially, vegan. <laughs> no Islamophobes, I'm Syrian for fuck's sake. Uh, okay. And looking for new friends. Um, Got the alternative vibe going on. Yeah. Full sleeve tattoo. Got some nice piercings. Interesting digging fashion, that. yeah. Ooh, digging that lipstick. You have Got that nice, shade, don't I you? do have that shade. Nice lavender. Yeah, this, yeah, this one's pretty cool. cool. Not, <laughs> Is that a that, thrift shop? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's wearing a dragon, Village! Wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt. Oh, man. That's cute. Um, I think we could chill for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think we'd be friends. Yeah. <laughs> you message me message if you're, me queer, if you're queer and weird. weird. Cool. Which used to mean the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> How queer? We'd like to thank our listeners for following our show. You can find us at our website, faculty.ca, and that's F A K V L T Y.ca which has links to our shows on archive.org, iTunes, YouTube, and other content that we've written and recorded. And you can spread the word with the hashtag FineFreya, that's F-I-N-E-F-R-E-Y-J-A, or support us by leaving a review on iTunes. And I'd also like to thank James R. Bayless for lending us his voice at the top of the show. You can reach his voice agent Gemma Crow at G-E-M-M-A at turnerfilmgroup.com. This has been Fine Freya. I'm Mark. And I'm Natasha. And as As always, always, love love someone someone with your genitals. genitals.